gentlemen, we're here. No, no, I know. We're here with two of the greatest people I know in the world. We're here with the, the, the founder of the World Greatness Show, Professor Dr. Patrick Basinge. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man that started the World Greatness Movement. Patrick, man, we are so blessed. You are impacting the world. And then we have with us none other than Dr. V. He's always in the place to be, Dr. <laughs> Professor Burnett Allen Joseph. This man is is he's he's the the modern day man philosopher of this man productive business civility. This is the man, the myth, right in your presence, Patrick. May lead us to the top. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Clyde Rivers, for joining us, the world's greatest civility leader, and Dr. Venet Joseph, uh, the chief strategist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it is very great to have you this, uh, this evening in London, this night in Kampala, Uganda, and this afternoon in California. Arizona and California, yes, indeed. Uh, Amazing. So, Dr. Venet, I know you're very, very busy and we have to keep this short and sweet. So, could you introduce yourself to our viewers tonight? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Professor Basenge. I am grateful and thankful to be on the line with World Greatness. Look, you couldn't have put a better lineup together. You've got the man who's created the founder of Greatness University, and then you have the global world leader of civility on the line. So I am humbled uh, to be on the line with you all today. The way that I would describe myself is I'm a simple man with a plan that is here to help people to be productive in every area of their life. I believe that productivity truly is the backbone of our world. Productivity is the lifeline of leadership. And when we recognize this, we will live our life in such a manner to be impactful and make a difference as we leave a legacy. So if there was anything that I would say about myself is I'm humble, I'm grateful, and it's time to make an impact on this world. Oh, that's amazing. That's powerful. And actually, we are, too, uh, we are very humbled looking at your busy schedule and you taking the time to be with us tonight. One of the words that comes through what you do is productivity. Yes. Can you tell us about how you came to that journey, to that word, productivity, to just dominate your whole life? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for asking. You know, when I'm asked this question, I really have to take it back to my roots, Professor Basinge. Yes. I know without a shadow of a doubt, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a relationship guy first and I'm a family man at all times. So when people ask me this, I believe it's only proper for people to have the proper people treatment because that's what was embedded in me from my birth. It's in my DNA. So when I look at these two, the relationship and the family side of things, and then being someone who has loved business since the age of 10, I see myself as a person who is productive in business, but you cannot negate civility because civility is about proper people treatment. And when you treat people well, the sky is not even the limit. There's an opportunity for you to touch and embrace heaven. So when you put those three words together, productive business civility, I find myself, one, using my genuine love for people, two, using my business acumen to love those who God created and help them to be innovative and help them to dominate in their specific niche or what they were created to do. I wrap all of that into the currency of relationship and there you have productive business civility. Well, and what a great opportunity as well to be with the world's, uh, uh, world's greatest civility leader, Dr. Yes. Clay Rivers. So how do you see this linking with civility and uh, create helping people become great? You know, the, uh, Dr. Patrick, the, the, the one thing that I see with men like yourself, you are a professor of greatness. Professor Vernet is the professor of business civility, uh, business productivity civility. We 
are creating a new narrative. The old narrative right now is out of the door. I, I, I remember I was sitting in a meeting a year ago where a gentleman said, said Dr. Rivers, uh, data is king. Well, we had a talk a couple of days ago, and I said, I beg to differ. Innovation is king. Mm -hmm. After the pandemic, what data do you have for the pandemic? And I'm going somewhere with this. Men like you two are modern day professors in the arena of greatness and the arena of civility. So you too, and Dr. Vernet, this man is one of the ones that will create the new paradigm. So I see this marrying itself so well, greatness and, and, and civility. And at the end of the day, we are working for God. We're yes. working to make people's lives better for God, not not just for, for our own personal benefit. And, and the both of you have laid your life down, your money, your family, all these things to make the world a better place for others. So I believe you two are new professors of a new paradigm of education in the world. That's my thoughts as the world civility leader. Oh, that's amazing. Thanks so much. So Dr. Vennett, you said uh, from the age of nine or 10, mm -hmm. uh, you were already in business. How yes. did that happen? <laughs> I believe that life, Professor Basinge, will cause things to come out of you. I, I like to say it this way. When the squeeze is on, what's in you will come out. I remember painting houses and, and uh, reconstructing bikes and mowing lawns and washing cars, doing the things that made other people comfortable, but also gave me an opportunity to generate revenue. So I've had a business mindset since the age of 10. I was that young kid in school who went, I don't know how many people who are watching today remember what an ice cream truck used to be like in the Ooh, neighborhood. Ice cream. Ice cream. When, you, when you used to hear that little bell coming down the road, <laughs> people would run out of the house and everything. But let me show you the mindset of productivity at a young age. The mindset of productivity at a young age says, hmm, he comes with the bell. Everyone comes running. Opportunity. Ding, 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 ding. Well, how about I build a relationship? See, let me, let me back up a little bit. People hear me say all the time that relationships is the new currency. Let me show you how this worked for me at the age of 10. I built a relationship with my ice cream man. And I would go to school with my books in my backpack, but I would make a stop at the ice cream truck. And I would pick up a, a 48 pack of Snickers and, and maybe a, four, a 24 pack of Skittles and a 24 pack of, of something else. And I would carry that to school, Dr. Basinga. Mm -hmm. I would carry that to school, Dr. Clyde Rivers, and I would make more money before class started because I was selling what people wanted. And because I had it and the ice cream truck wasn't around, I had a monopoly. Mm -hmm. So business oh. is in my DNA. When I say literally what I see, it takes me five minutes of talking to someone if they're genuine with me. And I can craft out a business model for you because that's the way my brain thinks. It's true. Wow. True. And out of that, you've created the Productive Business Summit. What does yes, that involve then? Absolutely. Listen, listen, I'm so excited for everyone uh, who has attended our summits over the years. Uh, God has done some miraculous things. Again, it's about relationships. If you're writing anything down, it's RCP, Relationships collaboration, and partnerships. Relationships, collaboration, and partnerships. I saw a need when I came to Arizona almost 10 years ago, well, 10 years now ago, and I went to every business uh, connecting and collaborating, networking session that I could find. And what I noticed was there was a disparity. People who lived on the west side stayed on the west side. Those who lived on the east side stayed on the east side. And you would never be able to get the two to marry for one event. So mm -hmm. what I decided to do was create an event called the Productive Business Summit that would teach people my philosophy on productive business, but do it in a forum that was non-threatening. Because it seems to me in business, people do two things, Dr. Basinge. Yes. They compete or they compliment. I try to teach people how to compliment because there's no competition. The only person that you're in competition with is yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So if you find a way to use relationships, collaborations, and partnerships, you will find yourself how, uh, learning how to collaborate and to complement instead of compete. So we built Productive Business Summit that happens right here in Arizona every year. And I've had some of the best speakers from around the world, like Dr. Ruben West, like Dr. Clyde Rivers, Dr. Will Moreland. I've had people like T.C. Cooper to come fly in from Washington, D.C. Our very first summit, I think we had 13 uh, nations represented, Dr. Rivers, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. It was a wonderful event. It was a wonderful event. And the key, what I want people to understand, most events are all about me making myself look big. If you've ever been to one of my summits, it's not about that. It's about collaboration. And then it's about the connections that are made after the summit and the business that transforms other people's lives after the summit. So the Productive Business Summit happens in June. Last year, we had a proclamation from uh, the Phoenix uh, mayor where we actually proclamated the day of June 8th. And on that day, we also opened up Phoenix Civility Day because Come on now. God Come on. is awesome. Come on. That's yeah, just a little bit of that simple summit. Dr. Rivers, we, would you share with us what your yeah. thoughts are on one of the summits you Man, attended? When I went to that event, I met that, that that's where I met doc, Dr. West. Yeah, there was right. there was there were so many connections and, and, and it's different because what it is is he's built a stage and he's letting other people walk on the stage. And and this is why everything that he does, everything that we're doing, it's not about my stage, it's who we can bring onto our stage. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 see, and this is why there's a new narrative of education about to hit the world. And we have the greatest professors in uh, that 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 we're creating that have created institutions. Dr. Burnett has created the institution of business productivity with civility. He's created so so when 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 you created just as you have, uh, Dr. Patrick, you've created Greatness University. It's a new concept. And hear this: when you first start something, people don't understand it. Mm-hmm. They will laugh and criticize, but hear this, Dr. Basinge, if any institution needs help and they come to Greatness University, they're going to have the people that have done the job. Yes, They will have people that can innovate and create. Dr. Vernet, productive business. If somebody comes to, to, to you right now with zero data and only a dream, you can take them and implement the dream. So yes, this sir. is 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 this is the wisdom of God because here this people God is taking over and his ideas need to come from a different type of education and mm-hmm. you you guys as as professor Basinge uh, uh uh Dr. Joseph the professor Dr. West he's a professor we have a new narrative and we're putting that narrative in the world and watch this narrative win and Dr. 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 Burnett Allen Joseph, the professor, the guy is off the grid, man. I'm telling you, off the grid. The grid is not hid because Dr. Burnett is the one. <laughs> Let's make this happen, guys. Oh, very, very powerful. Because what is going to happen, especially after after the coronavirus, we need people are productive. Mm-hmm. After coronavirus, the Absolutely. world, all the models, all the systems, all the theories which are drawn the world up to where we were, some of them will not be implemented. So there needs to be human beings who are productive, human beings who are innovative and creative to create new systems which adapt to that kind of world. That's absolutely correct, Dr. Desinge. What does the world look like after coronavirus, after the shelter in place, after the lockdown? Let me share this with everyone who's watching today. Number one, and I know we all will appreciate this, there's greatness on the inside of us. The question is, what will we do with that greatness? Will we hide the greatness? Will we dig it up and bury it? Or will we allow people to see the greatness so that it can shine bright, not only in us, with us, and through us, but onto other people? 
during this pandemic, this is the greatest time for us to begin to watch this excavate, evaluate, and then go out and demonstrate the blessings of God on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. This is the time for you to be roasting your ideas, your insight, and your influence, because when the floodgates open, my friends, those who were roasting, those who were preparing, those who were exercising, those who were doing strength training, those who were getting their minds right. Come on, Vic, come on. Go ahead, come those on, don't stop. People who are going to be on the front line, those who are sharpening their skills and getting their craft <laughs> ready, those who were in the mirror and speaking to themselves, those who were bringing those different things together to say, this is how I'm going to impact the world whether it was praying, whether it was singing, whether it was writing, whether it was dancing, whatever is on the inside of you folks, the squeeze is now on and it's time for you to let it out. There's greatness on the inside of you and we're begging you as a world to release it to us. And, and Patrick, Dr. Patrick, that's what Dr. Linda Lara is saying, release your greatness. Yes, Dr. River. What ha what's happening now is the wisdom of men has run out. Yes. The wisdom of God through the people of God will create the greatest move of the world's ever seen because, watch this here. Let me give you a scenario, uh, uh, both of you amazing men professors. A scenario is this. When you're unjust against God's creation, God has a day of recompense. Mm. You can't keep the ideas of God suppressed because when you suppress the ideas of God, you're damaging the future. Mm. So what happens, 7.8 billion people have gifts from God and those gifts have been marginalized, put on back burners, put in and, 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 and no one's care. So this new paradigm, God's raising up people like everybody on. And we are people that are going to value people more than economic resources. And oh, when you no. value the people, you will get more economic resources because God's value is in the people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what's coming I next. It. I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, because when we look at the world, uh, we have, yes, the people who believe in God, but there's always uh, as well a Great number of people who don't, maybe they that they suppress or they don't believe. So, what are the ways we can unsuppress? We can bring those ideas to the fore. As I know, productivity is one of them. I know civility is one of them. Can we elaborate on those? Absolutely. Um, I, I would say this: the only reason that something is suppressed is because we don't find value in the thing that is on the inside of us. When you recognize your value, when you recognize that you were put on this earth to make a difference, then you will not suppress the gift that was given unto you. You will not suppress the relationship, the horizontal relationship and vertical relationship. See, the horizontal relationship is you and I. It's us connecting even on this wonderful tool that we're util utilizing during this pandemic. Yeah. That's another conversation that we can have. Stop using social media as a toy and begin to use it as a tool. So here we are in three different parts of the world, but we're connected on one program to make a difference in everybody's life. How can this happen? Because we value, watch this, ourselves first, and then we learn how to value one another. Mm -hmm. The problem is people don't value the gift that they were given, therefore they step on it or they sit on it instead of wiping it off and polishing it up and presenting it like it should be. Mm. And, oh, and, yeah. and, 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 and then Patrick, I like to, I like to elaborate on that. Uh, there's also a, a, the Bible says we're the head and not the tail. We've been the tail and not the head. So what happens is everyone's followed the actual head and the head that hasn't been us has led to the ditch. Mm. So now, so I'm not worried about who's not in yet because they will follow the innovation from God. Mm. They will have to. So when you lead, they will follow. So we have to take our position being the head and not the tail above only. And the Bible says never beneath. Mm. So they will mm. follow leadership 
And that's what you great men are. You are a new generation leaders. You are the modern day professors. You don't bring history. You bring the mystery of God. And mm. the mystery of God is what makes all things new. And the church wow. said, Amen. Amen. Come on now. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let's take some time to recognize some of the people who are with us tonight. We have Dr. Ruben West uh, watching live from... Patrick, have that guy on. Ruben West needs to be yes. on this show. Phenomenal, phenomenal, yeah. speech, phenomenal gentleman. Amazing. And we have as well Dr. Nana. Dr. Nana as well right. from the... Ooh, there, there she is. That's what I'm talking about. Great leaders on the line. Uh, Professor Jared Akama watching. Oh, JK. All right. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good to see you guys. And Dr. Linda Lara. As hey, well. Dr. Oh, Linda. How are you? USA. This is the of the year. Yes, right. yes, yes. Oh, yes. We have Vinette Hoffman Jackson from the United Kingdom. You remember. All right. All right. Her, her, Vinette, yeah, she's great. Awesome. The BBC interviewer for the award, uh, World Greatest yes. Awards, the last time in January, and looking forward to the uh, upcoming awards in August. We have Dr. Julian Busenge. All Ooh. right, welcome back to Busenge. Good to oh. see you. Here you. I'm telling you, you got world greatness on the line already. Come on now. And we have uh, Archbishop Kiza Thomas Sibayiro. Uh, this Bishop, man is great in Uganda. He has his own university. He is, uh, he is creating his own university with a campus to help people in Western Uganda. He has wow. lots of schools, lots of orphanages, and uh, uh, he's doing great work. In Let's uh, work with him. Absolutely. With him. That's what I'm talking about. Blessings to you, Archbishop Thomas. Yes, we have Jamal A. Cummins. Oh. All right. The real Dr. Kimmel, all the way from it's Alabama, by way of St. Martin. That's Kami, Kami, Kami Hendrix. All right. Kami Hendrix. Hendrix. Kami Hendrix, man. Man, Kami is a great, phenomenal lady. Good to oh, have you here, Kami. Thank you. Good to have you on. Amazing. Yes, I might have missed some, which I'm not seeing at the moment. But importantly... Uh, in case, we, oh yes, we have Caroline Opinde. He is the, oh, uh, the NGO, the NGO Whisper. Whisper. That's welcome, her. welcome, welcome. Uh, yes, we do have uh, Phineas. Oh, Phineas, Phineas. Phineas. You gotta have Phineas. Phineas is Phineas is great. A, he's the best. That guy is the best. Amazing. And then we have uh, uh, Shayla Bagaya. Uh, she's uh, down in Texas. They're already free of them. They're already free. There's no lockdown in Texas. Te Texas but, is walking in freedom physically. But remember, <laughs> you can be quarantined physically, but never <laughs> quarantined mentally, folks. Let's Come do it. <laughs> yes. And uh, we have a good, uh, a good John White, uh, Elizabeth Lucas, author of Greatness, should be with us <sighs> for the awards. Denisa Gokovi from Albania. Uh, she's yes. a great pianist. Welcome. Great lady. Albania. Great lady. Uh, Sam Ebube, the guy oh, who created man. the world's will to Yes, yes, yes. Sam, oh, welcome, oh, welcome, Sam. welcome. Blessing. Sam is a legend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, we have uh, Baroness Nin Ritchie from the United Kingdom as well. She Glad was one of the great act actresses, actually. She was awesome, one of the awesome. actresses around. And she'll wow. be joining us as well for the World Greatness Award. Fantastic. Uh, again, we have uh, Her Excellency, Justina Mutala. Oh! All right! Blessings, blessings, Her Excellency. Justina Mutala is one of the great women in the world. I'm talking the entire world. Justina, mm. we're always blessed to have you. Any chance you're in the zip code, I'm going to come see you because you're yes, great. Indeed. Blessings to you. And the list continues. So coming back to where you were, what uh, Dr. Vernet was saying, really, that for us to be able to uh, unleash our greatness, unleash the greatness of God operating within, the, uh, within creation, we have to be able to have the, uh, the horizontal and, uh, and the, the vertical. 
Which yes. one? Vertical relationship. Both horizontal and vertical. Your relationship you actually right. Actually, as you are saying, that reminded me of the model that I have for greatness. Mm -hmm. Because I've just created the greatness code, published awesome. the awesome. greatness code. Mm -hmm. And what in the way saying the greatness code is that most people focus on the outward greatness. Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, what can, what am I doing in the world? They look at what they've created or the achievements, their businesses. But sometimes we miss out the interesting bit, which is the inward greatness. Yes. So thinking about the inward greatness where most of our productivity lies. Mm. That phone, before it came a phone, it was an idea. Mm -hmm. mm. And then the idea became reality. This book mm. that came a book, it was an idea, and then it was yeah. realized. But I couldn't have done this book without going within me, discovering mm. my inward greatness. And then from there, I can realize it, or create it to the world as outward greatness. But most people, we stop there. Mm. We never think about making that upward move. Mm -hmm realize our origin the upward move to make connection with the initiator of our existence that's right but as well as we do the upward move there's a downward move where that god meets us because if you look at the bible for example most of those stories the great people are going to the mountain they're climbing up they don't stay on the same level as other people they that's climb right. up to get the revelations and they come sure. down and then they reveal what they've discovered. So Moses, Jesus, mm -hmm. all those people are climbing up. So it is very important, as you're saying, that in the next era we're getting in after COVID, the ability to realize the upward greatness was where they eat the downward greatness for us to be really, really productive in life, for us to be really, really civil. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's true. Absolutely. Yes. I love that model. I love that model, uh, Professor Basinghe, because when you think about it, we're looking from the north, east, west, and the south. Yes. No matter what it is that you're dealing with, you have to have some kind of compass, if you would. And mm -hmm. when you utilize that in the greatness code, when you seek to go higher, most people don't understand it's going to take work right? It's going to take work. So climbing that mountain is you exercising your faith, your, your, your energy, your efforts, your experience. You climbing that mountain means that you've got to get off of your fourth point of contact and decide that you're going to make a move. When you make that move, you have to look for instruction so that you can stay on task and on target. That's that upward climb, that upward motion that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. At the very same time, those who may have been with you at the beginning, they're going to start falling off at their level of capacity. But as you continue to move forward, God now, watch this. We used to say it like this. It says when the praises go up, God's blessings come yes. down and his power goes out so that it can transform the world. So as you're climbing up that mountain of greatness, you're climbing up that mountain of civility, you're climbing up that mountain of productivity, whatever your mountain is, remember this, you have to have a give me that mountain experience and mentality. And as you're going up, God then says, I like what you're doing. There was a song back in the day, when I move, you move just like that. God is saying, when you move, I'm going to see your faithful steps. I'm going to move and we're going to make it happen just like that. That's what wow. it is. Wow, wow. Patrick, I'd like to interject something on this. Dr. Burnett said, as we climb the mountain, there's another perspective. When we get to the top, yes. when we get to the top of the mountain, that's when we narrate for the world. Come on that's now. what I'm doing. That's when we create greatness code. And that's when we create productive business miscibility. That's when we create our narrative. Because watch this here. <clears throat> People, no one in the world will ever tell you when you're number one. Mm. If they tell you you're number one, they already have a system that classifies you. So mm -hmm. you're number one according to this 
this this this uh, this thing that accredits you. Well, when you're a true when you're a true pioneer, there is no accreditation because you're creating everything new. Mm-hmm. You're making all things new. So what happens is men like yourself and the amazing women that work around us, the other leaders, we are creating the new paradigm. I'm not settling for being on stage. I'm not settling for this guy. No, 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 no. The ideas, the authentic ideas of God in us are what's going to move the world forward. And it won't, I don't care if anybody validates us, they're going to validate the God we serve because he's the one that will get the results. Now, 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 quickly, everything that was valid six months ago will not be valid after COVID-19. Mm-hmm. It's a whole nother. So there'll be new people that are creating validation. So this is why I challenge people. Think number one. The idea in you, God didn't give it to anyone else. He patented you with the design. So stop looking for other people to mind your gold Mm. and mind your own gold. Mm. And the church said, Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it right there. If I could interject something, Professor Basinga, I heard a great man say one time, he said, Validation is for parking tickets. Mm -hmm. So People don't need a validation because God has already validated you from the beginning before you ever were born. So the greatness that's on the inside of you, the civility that you're supposed to produce, that productivity that God is saying, go, 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 go. No one can validate you for that because God has already done it. Now, the key is don't rob the world of the greatness on the inside of you. That's the key. You've got to walk from an understanding of if you don't produce at optimal levels, if you hold back, you are cheating the world of your greatness. Wow. Speechless, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> because because let, let me explain this. The, the wisdom of God, everything in the world was created by God. Every building, every idea, everything came from an idea from God. Now watch this. How did we kick God out of what he created? Because we let a spirit of intellectualism teach people how to be smarter than God. Well, I'm challenging those smart people right now. Find a solution for this. Find a solution for this. You can't. So what happens is, is, um, I mean, Professor, you're... Your greatness code may not be in in academia, but it's in God. Mm-hmm. It may not be in that system, but it's in God. I mean, mm-hmm. Productive business, you, Dr. Renette, the books you created as, as professors, may, it, it may not be in act, but it's valid from the throne of God. And watch how many people are going to flock to the greatness code and how many people are going to flock to the productive business ability because you have answers in real time people are leaving institutions that only have head knowledge and Mm -hmm. watch this here if you can't deliver in the day of adversity your faith is small and here Mm -hmm. this many people are lowering their value because they didn't build right in the day of adversity well Mm -hmm. you two great professors and listen to me you're the new paradigm of the world you are professors from god so if, if anybody in the world questions, you, your, your professorship came from heaven because heaven is the originator of new ideas. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. If wow. you can't deliver on the day of adversity, your faith is small, says mm. Dr. Rivers. So mm. it reminds me one of the stories where they are, uh, the disciples say, Lord, increase our faith. So how can we increase our faith? <laughs> to deliver on the days of adversity uh, and after adversity. Listen, listen, this is what I know. Once again, God has given us everything we need to live a godly life, to be successful in life. In order to increase your faith, you've got to dive into what faith is. Mm-hmm. You've got to understand who the creator of faith is. You've got to go back to the source. It's just like plugging up a computer or a phone or whatever. You want to know why your phone runs out of juice? Because it needs to be powered by something. So if you want to increase your faith, you have to be powered by God. 
Now, I know we've all heard that before, oh, right? Yes. So if you want to increase your faith, go back to the source which started your faith and get plugged in so that you can be rejuvenated, refreshed, and ready to relaunch. Anytime you find yourself getting low, that means you need to get connected back to the source of your faith. Um, and and, and uh, Dr. Basinge, uh, and, and a step further, I, I ask people, why did you stop moving forward? Mm. Uh, 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 the, the actual virus, did it, it, it quarantined your body, but not your mind. I've done more in the last month. My things are moving all over the world because God's not quarantined. So what happens is this, uh, Dr. Businge, people listen to man so much. And of, mm -hmm. of course, I'm washing my hands. I'm staying home. I can comply with, 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 those, with those health precautions and yes. still live in greatness. I can, I, man, I, greatness is right here. So, so, so I, I tell people, don't stop moving towards your, your vision. Don't stop moving because this is a deception. People think that they act in faith when they start moving towards what God says. No, he says, we walk by faith. What am I saying? We walk by faith means if I wake up this morning and walk towards negativity, I'm walking towards faith for negativity. Mm. If I wake up this morning, start walking towards God, I'm walking towards faith in God. It says we walk by faith, not when we're anticipating faith. We walk by faith every day. So mm. I'm up mm. today walking by faith in my bright future. Now, here on, somebody, now. somebody woke up this morning and started walking in, in fear. So they're going to manifest fear and I'm going to manifest God. Mm. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, really, if you, in case you've just joined us, we're on the Great Life Show. We have the amazing Dr. Clyde Rivers, world civility leader. Uh, we have the great productivity uh, strategist, uh, Dr. Vanet Joseph, and we are discussing about greatness. We are discussing about civility. We are discussing about productivity. And if you have anyone who would like to listen to this message, please share. They can share this message, they can share this video uh, so that they too can be helped to increase their productivity, their greatness and their civility. So Dr. Rivers, this is you, civility. How can we increase our civility? We're looking at increasing the faith, we're increasing productivity, increasing greatness. How can we increase our civility? When, 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 when we understood, let me tell you, it was something I learned about four to five years ago. Yes. I learned that we are greater than me. Mm. I learned that. Mm. I, I grew up as an athlete want, wanting to be the most competitive person and wanting to win everything. So I didn't care if you won as long as I won. Mm -hmm. When I got wise, I said, we are bigger than me. So now I, I had a person call me and said, doctors, you ought to start this thing. I said, no, I'm not going to control anyone. I'm going to empower everyone. Mm -hmm. The different model is now I need other people. So I have to be civil because I know you have a piece that I don't have. See, this is what the whole world needs to understand. We have run on 10% of the mentality of the world. That's the wealthy and the influential have controlled systems of the world for decades, but they're not controlling anything now. God just took over. So mm -hmm. we need 7.8 billion people's ideas because everyone will solve somebody else's problem. This is why uh, Jillian asked me a question yesterday. She said, Dr. Rivers, what do you hate most in the world? I said, injustice, because mm -hmm. injustice stops people from being what God's called them to be. Yes. So so to increase civility, we need everyone and we have to fight for everyone to be free and have the opportunity to do what God's called them to do. And we have a better world. If that's not motivation, I don't know what is. <laughs> yes, it is. Definitely yeah. is. Oh, yes. So thank you so much for that great answer. And if you're watching us and you have any questions, feel free to write them in the feed. Um, then we'll be able to uh, answer those questions for you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Dr. Vanet, yes, one of the things that marked your life was the 
if I'm not mistaken, you've been to the arm of the military. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. How did the skills you learned there and the principles link up with the, your business of, of productivity? Because we learn from experiences, we learn from the struggles, and it's through those struggles that we get our strength. Uh, so it's possible that when, with, for example, the experiences you had when you were in the army might have gone on to help you become the person you are today. Because yeah. there's only one Van, uh, Dr. Van, and there's no other. <laughs> right? Even if I try to copy your systems, I will never be right. you. Why have right. you been formed by the experiences you've gone through and grown through? Yes. Now, I love the way that you ended that, Professor Basinga. First thing we need to recognize is what you've gone through and what you've grown through are two total different things. Mm. You can marry, but if you don't see them and have value in mm. them, you'll miss the whole lesson that we were supposed to learn. Mm. Yes, I was a combat veteran for 20 plus years in the United States Army. I'm grateful and thankful for every opportunity that I've had. I visited over 60 plus countries and spoken in those countries from the military side as well as business side. Why? Because I embraced my path. So I was a logistics officer in the military as well as a contracting officer in the military. That allowed me to see both sides of the spectrum and to work with all of the services. So when you have joint task force, what do you have? You have what we have on the line right now. We've got greatness, civility, and productivity being jointly fit together so that we can strike the mark in where we're headed. Well, the military did the exact same thing for me. As a military veteran, I understand what we call selfless service. Most people in the world don't understand that terminology. Selfless mm -hmm. means I'm not selfish. Mm -hmm. I'm selfless to serve. If you're ever going to be great in life, if you're ever going to walk mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. your purpose and have civility, then you're going to have to learn how to produce and serve how to produce and serve. I have learned through my military career that selfless service is key. It's the key to a lot of things. It unlocks the door to a lot of things. And that's why if you ever want to touch heaven, you learn how to produce and mm. you learn how to serve. Watch this. Without ulterior motives, you mm. give of yourself. That's what selfless service means. I give not necessarily expecting something in return. Mm -hmm. I give, the Bible teaches me that he who has friends must first find himself friendly. So that means I have to selflessly serve. Now, as you move from there, what the military also taught me was what I call community engagement. I was, I was engaging my community prior to the military, but it helped me to do it on heightened levels. It helped me to get to generals. It helped me to get to the people at the top. That's what we talk about, coming in from the top. Well, the beauty that I would say, Professor Basinge, that I learned from the military is I am the same person that will talk to the person on the street than the person that's yeah. in the White House. I'm the same person that they're going to encounter whether I'm in the church house or the outhouse. I'm the same person, no matter where you find me, you're going to get the same me. Why? Because right. community engagement is important. If we are going to affect our communities, we've got to do it with a selfless service heart. Now, I live, I eat, and I breathe productivity. So if you're talking to me in the grocery store, I'm going to engage this like an op order, an operational order. There's a reason that you came across my path and I'm supposed to give you the best of what I have because I don't know what you're going to produce when you leave me. So I'm not going to cheat you and I pray that you won't cheat me by hiding the greatness on the inside of you. Those are just some of the things that I learned from being in the military. Wow. 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 Uh, and, and and let me let me tell you, you two, you two world leaders, Professor Joseph, Professor Basinge, you are the leaders of the new paradigm. Your greatness code, your is 
some of the most amazing things that I see. I'm so confident in our future with guys like you. I'm confident that 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 what let, let me give you some experience. When you build with God, it's not always valid by the system first, but mm -hmm. then it becomes the validation. Mm -hmm. When you when you I, I encourage you stay the course. Greatness University has some of the greatest people in the world. Productive business ability. You you guys are modern day man philosophers. People are going to write about you for hundreds of years after you're gone. That's the impact you two great men are creating right now. And I'm telling you, if I can encourage you, don't look for a kiss from the institution. Make the institution follow you because you have the answers from God. Because what you're going to face is a bunch of people that uh, many, many, many individuals have a mind that's so, 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 so world colonized. They're going to mm -hmm. say, let's get this valid. No, it is valid. It came from God. Mm -hmm. I've stood my ground for 20 some years, laughed at, criticized, mocked in the media. And now we're leading a paradigm because I stay true to the gift and the calling of God. Anyone watching. Stay true to the assignment God gave you. It may not be valid at first by the world, but it's valid from heaven because the idea came from God. Dr. Rivers, we right. received that. We are tracking. We hear you loud and clear. Uh, and, and let me, if I could, Professor Basinga, say this. Many people who may be watching this live don't know who Dr. Clyde Rivers is. No, Dr. Clyde Rivers has so many different titles, it's ridiculous. <laughs> have you ever heard of a chameleon who could change coats on you like in the drop of a dime? This man created and founded I Change Nations, an organization that is changing the world across the globe. Every crevice of the globe has been touched by I Change Nations. Great leaders have been built up People have been spoken into. Lives have been changed because of this man who's in the middle of this stream. What I need you to understand is that he is a forerunner for the world. He is a forerunner to help the world understand what it means to operate from the top. When you talk about someone who's been in the background roasting for 20 years, two decades, before it was sexy to be calling out civility, this man was in the trenches. So if we're going to talk productive strategies, if we're going to talk greatness, if we're even going to comb a little bit of civility, we must acknowledge the global world civility leader. Mm -hmm. This man has empowered hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of people to see the blessing on the inside of them. A quote, once I heard it that I can never forget, it's 7.8 billion people and they all have value. If you've been watching social media for the last week to two weeks, you better be careful when you quarantine great minds because people are actually shooting up to their potential every single day from one phone call with Dr. Clyde Rivers. I'm talking about project upon project upon project that is being created because he's breathing and speaking life into others and waking up the greatness on the inside of them. Folks, this is the day for you to recognize that it's your time. Stop waiting. Stop complaining. Stop saying what everybody else is saying and get to work. It's your time. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. And that really is very important what you are saying. And it boils down to the uh, one of the things you said, what you deal with the uh, productive business summit, relationships, yes, partnerships or yes. networks. Because without, for example, without Dr. Ruben West, I wouldn't know Dr. Rivers. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know without Dr. Rivers. I wouldn't know about you. Yes, sir. Dr. Barnett. That's why, so that's why connections are important. Mm -hmm. I, I love it, Professor Basinga. That's why relationships, the mm -hmm. build relationships and realize the kind of people who as well can come at the right time or the yeah. right time because a lot of people have bypassed Dr. Rivers. 
whether it's in the in the plane or on the metro or on the buses, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but because their time hasn't come yet. Mm -hmm. But for some of us listening tonight, this is our time. Yes. yes. To realize yeah. the dreams that we have for the world, to build wow. those dreams, wow. to be productive. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Professor Pusenga, I would say this timing is everything. We are all equal in time, but we are separated by how we produce in it. Mm -hmm. The reason that relationships mm -hmm. are so important is because when God orchestrates a relationship, you may not physically understand why, but what you must do is you must watch this, not react but respond. Because when you react to something, that means you were thrown off guard. But when you respond to something, it means that you are responding from a place of knowledge. When you are tied in and connected and in tune to the God that you serve, God will allow you to know who is the right person to connect with. Mm. Listen to what you said. Had it not been for Dr. Reuben West, you would have not met Dr. Clyde Rivers. But here's what's beautiful about it. The right timing for everything is what matched up everything. Mm -hmm. Now, what the problem that most people have is this. They want to get ready instead of staying ready. So mm -hmm. when the relationship comes, you've got to be ready to take off. And that's where most people are missing it. Wow. That's in to the COVID situation. You cannot allow yourself to get, watch this, I'm going to say something that's going to mess people up. You cannot allow yourself to get stagnant because the moment that you get stagnant, you become stale. And once you get stale, what happens to water that does not run? Dead things begin to grow inside of it and then it stinks. Your life was meant to be a fresh smelling aroma to God. Do not mm -hmm. become stale. Do not allow yourself to become stagnant and don't start stinking up the place. Wow, wow, wow. And, and, and Patrick, let me add one thing. You, our young leaders are the new world leaders. The Bible says, be established in present truth. Many of the leaders right now are teaching historical truth. Mm -hmm and not present day truth. So really they've walked off the stage, but they're still on the stage. And God is bringing present day truth, modern day leaders. But my great thing for both great men like you is own the stage and be number one. Mm -hmm. No one will ever tell you you're number one, but God, because he created you and others can't see. Mm. Somebody asked me, they, they said, Dr. Rivers, what's this season like for you? I said, we're giving sight to the blind. They didn't, see, they didn't see us before, but they're seeing us now. They yeah. couldn't see. They once were blinded by, by big stages and big names. But hear this, who's the ones in this day that are rising up? It's Greatness University, it's Productive Businesses, it's Dr. Christina Kochicek, Professor Jared Akama, Dr. Ruben West, USA Leader, Dr. Linda Lara. It's people like us. Let me tell you that it's our stage now. Mm. Stop looking for validation and create what's valid. Yeah. You're mm. it. It, it, you're it. God's put you on. It's your time to soar and quit looking for a kiss from a mentor. Go do it and God will bring the mentors in your path. And here it is. And they want the, the mentors won't control you. They will impart to you and you say, yes, no, this. I, I have I have hundreds of people I'm mentoring around the world and I don't tell them what to do. They call me, we talk. I, I give mm -hmm. them advice. This is what to do. Not what. I, hey, this is what I did, guys. But here, this my experience isn't yours. So, mm -hmm. so, so mentorship is changing. It's changing because people are tired of paying thousands of dollars. At the end, you have nothing. At the end, no deliverables. That day's mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. You're the new leaders that will produce. Wow, <laughs> wow. I love that. If I if I could quickly piggyback off of that, Professor Basinga. At yeah. the end of the day, 
People are sick and tired of talking about what could happen and they want to see what's going to happen, what has happened. I tell people, listen, don't contact me if you're not ready to produce because my job is to help you to bring that thing that's on the inside of you to fruition. If you're not ready to make a move, don't contact me because I'm going to press you. I'm going to provoke you to do what you were called to do. Now, you have those, and we're not going to name names, where you're paying all this money and nothing is happening. Where's the evidence and the results? Execution is the key. If you want to follow someone, before you follow them, you do this thing we call research. And you start to find out where they are, what they've done, who they've connected to. You, again, don't need validation from someone else. So don't go to somebody who's utilizing everybody else's publicity. Ask what have they done for themselves mm. and what they created mm. from scratch and mm -hmm. whom have they helped. If you ever want to check the barometer or the temperature of a leader, don't look at them, ask them who they have mentored and coached and trained and see the work that they have done. And when you see that, you see the true essence of leadership. Mm. Uh. Yes. So in other words, they have to, <laughs> you know, to be great. You're great by the fruit you produce. Uh, there's no point you're saying I'm a tree and you're not being useful to the people around you. So at least the fruit, the fruit that that tree will produce <laughs> oxygen. So by the fruit, uh, by the by, uh, by the fruits of those people, by the fruits of those leaders, then we are attracted to them to harvest some of those fruits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And your fruit, your fruit from the greatness event is still living. Your fruit is expanding. Dr. Burnett, Professor Burnett, your productive business summits. Man, I, I was there a couple years ago. The one from 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 last year was bigger and better. City of Phoenix uh, 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 established a proclamation for Civility Day. And, 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 and let me let me give you a, 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 the, the whole key. The wisdom of God helps you understand and how to use the knowledge of God. And you have to have the wisdom to understand what knowledge to use in this season. Mm -hmm. This is your season. And, and, and if I can encourage anyone watching, go big because faith is not predicated on you, it's predicated on God. He's the author and finisher of the yeah. faith. So all you do is walk the steps that he authored. You walk them out. You don't control the steps. He's the author and finisher. When I start, what guys, when, when I started this uh, decades ago, I knew I was going to change the world. But now world leaders call my phone. Mm -hmm. Former presidents call my phone. When I go places, they want to shake my hand. Why? Is it because I'm great? No, it's because follow, please, um, please hear this wisdom. Don't pay your way out of your education. Mm. Walk through your trials. Mm -hmm. Your trials have education. And in the midst of every trial, there's a key to open the next door. Mm -hmm. Wow. Most people want to pay their way out of their trial because it's hard. But hear this. Every trial I've been through was a stepping stone for the next season to be balanced. Mm -hmm. So don't pay your way out. Don't, don't go get all this education on all these things. Get it, but walk your education out because your education is from God, not what you think. When I went to Bible school, for example... I learned stuff in the classroom, but, but, but Patrick, I got more education from God by the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So God's education looks different. And, and, and man, Patrick and, and, uh, uh, and, and Dr. Burnett, I grew up out of bounds. Mm -hmm. A pastor, small church in, in Victorville wouldn't get past 20 people for 16 years. That was my stewardship. Mm -hmm. Then then the next season was honorary ambassador for the country of Burundi. How do you go from, from, from 20 people, 16 years to 10 million in a country mm -hmm. now to this, because God was watching my stewardship and then he put me in my rulership. Come on. That's the difference. Come on.
Let, let, let me piggyback off of that really quickly, uh, Professor Basinga. Yes. I, I want to tell the people who are listening right now, what you do not get by revelation, you can also get by association. Mm -hmm. Say it again. What you don't get by mm -hmm. revelation, you can also get by association. So when you look at the small things that we're doing every day, day in, day out, people only see the fruit of what has happened. But what about the root? What about the trenches? What about the nourishment that, that had to be given when we were excavating, right? So what I want people to understand is, yes, you see these great leaders on the line right now, it didn't happen overnight. You've got to do the work. If you don't do the work, nothing will work for you. Let the word work in you and then go work the word, yeah, right? Come on, come on. And then after you do that, oh, hold on one minute. I see someone commenting right now, uh, Professor Patrick. Yeah. They say, what if the father gives you something that no one else is doing? That's perfect mm -hmm. because God then gave you a niche. He gave you something for you to start so that you can start off at the top. You become that person that is bringing that really narrative good. to power. So that's exactly. what you do if God that's something that no one else is doing. You that's do good. the work and let God handle his business. That's good. Yes, and that's why we were saying yesterday, Dr. Rivers, because some of the things, uh, like Greatness University, people ask, how long has it been there? It's not even three years. Okay, it's not mm -hmm. even three years. It's as if it's been there forever. But that, uh, that wasn't pre-planned in advance that there will be a Greatness University. It wasn't planned in advance that there will be a Greatness Awards. It wasn't mm -hmm. planned that there will be a great World Greatness Summits and so on. But those are things that are working through them. Uh, as we walk, the doors are opening, uh, or God is opening the doors for us to walk into the next season, and to the next season, and to the next season. But comes to the attentiveness, to the path, you're walking and we, what you find along the path. There might be those signposts that we're ignoring. There might be those signposts you're passing so quickly that we're not taking time to look at what is mm. my lesson in this event I've just gone through. What am I getting by spending an hour and a half on this, watching this live show? Mm. So these are some of the signposts we're getting along the way, which are showing us the path. Uh, and that path is going to be the original one because if we don't, then we'll end up copying someone else's and then we won't be successful That's because right. that wasn't our gift in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, I love that. I love that. Dr. Rivers, I, I need I need you to hit the people with a little bit of when histories collide because that works perfect right oh, yeah, here. Yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> Come on now. Break it down, sir. Break you it know, down. You know, the... the, the one of the most important things in the world is D Dr. Burnett and and um, and Dr. Patrick is 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 um, I've seen people talk out of their greatness mm. because because a system doesn't acknowledge your gifting. Mm -hmm. Now, no education system in the world can actually cater to 7.8 billion gifts. Mm. Who's going to validate 7.8 billion gifts? But God. And what takes place is this, 7.8 billion people with different ideas, their thought patterns and their experiences are gonna collide. When their histories collide, we have to listen to each other to go to the next level. And, right. and, and please, if I can encourage you in something, everyone, your assignment doesn't have to look like your training. <laughs> your now. assignment, doesn't have to look like your training. How could my years of pastoring a small church take me to be the honorary ambassador for a country at large? Your so one of the deceptions is your ex, your training doesn't have to look like your assignment because God's assignment for you is above what you can ask or imagine. But what happens, the, the actual world has infiltrated our minds and make us think we're preparing for this. No, you're not. You're preparing for something greater than you ever thought. And I want to encourage everyone with that. And that's when the histories collide. 
Yes, yes. And yes, when it I comes love to, uh, to a realization, the assignment is different from your training. And how do you grow your assignment? What What's, are the kind of things I need to do day by day to grow my assignment? Really, 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 really simple. Obey the next step. The word says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your steps. So it's really one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. How, how, do, how do you eat an elephant? One small bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, that's, that's what it's all about. That's, how, that's what it's all about. So many people, Professor Basinge, are trying yes. to jump to the end state. It's one thing to start with the end in mind, but you still have to train so that you can sustain the process as you go through and make progress. If you yes. don't do that, nothing else will work. I can dream of the end state all I want, but if I don't go do the work, if I don't walk it out brick by brick, step by step, if I don't do that, I'll never get to where I need to be. And even if I try to slingshot myself, what will end up happening is you will miss a step and you won't be <laughs> solid God, as you're God. supposed to be. So you might as well, listen, we all have to live. My question to you is why are you merely existing when you were created to live your life mm. to the fullest? Come on. Mm -hmm. And the only Come way on. that you can live it to the fullest is taking this thing one step at a time. That's it. And that leads us to your greatest motto, live to produce. And yes, that sir. you've created a business, live to produce, one of your enterprises. So can yes. you tell us about that and how we can live to produce just like you? Without question. Now, let me share this. You won't be able to do it just like me because it's only <laughs> one move. But you yeah. can do it just like you. Because you may be, look, you may be the person that's supposed to surpass me. So let's get out of the cookie cutter mode. When I think of living to produce, I tell people we weren't created to produce to live, meaning that everything that we're doing is just so that we can eat. We don't want to feed people. Watch this from this perspective. I don't want to just give you the fish. I want to teach you how to fish. That's yes. why it's live to produce and not produce to live. So we were created with greatness on the inside of us. We were created with a mustard seed of faith, but it's up to us to exercise, strengthen, stretch, and walk by faith, talk by faith, right? So how do you do that? By living to produce. I am created to produce something on this earth. Once I tap into what I'm created to do and how I'm supposed to impact this world, then I stay in my lane. Mm -hmm. Too many people are trying to jump from track to track because they saw somebody else do it. Mm. You are authentically and genuinely yourself, unapologetically yourself. The mm. world will recognize your greatness. But if mm. you have a cheap imitation mindset, Come on. they will spew you out of their mouth and say, we've already seen that. So when you're living to produce, you're tackling yourself. You're digging deep on the inside of self and asking yourself, why am I here? What was I created to do? That's when you recognize your purpose and your passion and you marry them together to produce productivity. That's what living to produce is. So no matter what industry I'm speaking with, whether it's a person in the music industry, whether it's the restaurant business, whether it's entrepreneurship, government, wherever, whatever the industry is, the question is, what were you created to do and how are you going to change this world? Once we get to that, we can build now. We can build now because now I'm going to help you how to live to produce. I'm going to help you to see why you're put here and what it is that you can do with the inner mechanisms that God has given you. 7.8 billion people have people solutions. Why? Because it's already ingrained and embedded yes. in us. The mm -hmm. question is, are you going to be lackluster, sluggard? Are you going to be slowful and let yourself go to the grave without producing the productive life that you were created to live? That is my mission, is to stop and eradicate hesitation, 
stagnation and procrastination when you can produce your best and most productive. Mm. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that comes as well with hard work because uh, hard work and hard work. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Put in a lot of work, hard work, hard work. Mm -hmm. yes. But they're working on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. They're working on something that is not going to make them productive in life. You can practice the wrong golf swing and you can pay thousands of dollars to do it. And when you go to play golf, guess what you're going to have? A messed up game. But when you do the heart work, the heart work, not the heart yes. work, that's when you will recognize, wait a minute, my fundamentals are off. Wait a minute, I didn't do that correctly. See, listen, <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So mm -hmm. you've got to tap inwardly to the inward mechanisms on the inside of you that are ultimately tied to your God that gives you your daily bread and the nuggets that you need to live. And then you've got to cultivate those things so that you can speak them into existence. Mm. When you do that, Every morning that you wake up, you've got to have some productive affirmations. You've got to have some, some things that's going to transform your yeah. mind because the world don't owe you nothing, baby. But you have to get up and decide you were created for greatness. I am a child of God. I am here to produce. My job is to change the world in this form, in this facet, through God-given talents and tools that he gave me. That's why everything you need, it's in the book. It's in the book. Dr. Rivers. This is our time. And I'm encouraging everyone step beyond your intellect and step into faith. Faith is the currency that moves the world. All things are created by God. God makes all things new. So when he gives you a new idea, do not be afraid to act because he just gave you currency to build the future. Wow. That's it. Thank Building you. Lots so of success. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Dr. Basinge, tell us a little bit more about Greatness University and the big things that are going to happen in August. Well, what we do at Greatness University is to help people discover develop, deliver, and celebrate their greatness. So in August, we'll be celebrating greatness. Uh, in August, we'll be celebrating greatness from people from all over the world. Of course, we may have about 60 nationalities, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where we celebrate who they are. We celebrate what they've achieved. Some people mm. will be getting uh, awards like Icon of Greatness. Icon of Greatness. These are the people who have transitioned from being ordinary to extraordinary. Of course, say there is 7.8 billion people, but there are people who stand out from the ordinary because they've lived their gift to that level. I uh, will be celebrating legends of greatness. These are the people who have been able to live great lives, but as well replicate it. If you really have to be great, as we're saying, you'll be known great by the fruits you produce. And sometimes the fruits are better than you. So who are those people who are legends, who have gone on to create, who help others be greater than they are? So legends of greatness, and they're living a legacy so that even if they're not here today, well, they're not there tomorrow, their legacy will continue. We'll be looking at and celebrating creators of greatness. These are the people who have moved from being unknown to known. That is a creator of greatness, Steve Jobs. Creation, you can see the product. So looking at the innovators, the, create, the people have created products that we use um, things or systems, organizations will be celebrating their greatness. So looking at visionaries, yes, I might not have the creation, but have the vision. You can't say it. 
I'm working towards it and I'm helping other people work in, in that vision. So we'll be looking at those kind of people and again, mm -hmm. celebrating them. So it's going to be a great moment. I'm looking forward to uh, to celebrating your greatness, definitely, Dr. Vanet. Dr. Rivers will be there as well. And uh, it is going to be exciting. Awesome, awesome. You know, Thank you. one of the things that I appreciate is when people tap into their God-given gift and talent and they bring it to the world. People like Steve Jobs, people like the Hiltons, people like all the great names that you know, but now there are everyday and modern day heroes that are rising up. There mm -hmm. are great humanitarians that are rising up. There are global yes. leaders. And I, I just wanna give a forethought if I could. Yes. There's a young man that I know who is crafting a book called The Making of a World Leader. And I tell you when this book comes out folks, you do not want to miss it. There's gonna be such great insight in this book that will transform your life. It's not your regular self-help book. It's something that if you pick it up, you will have over two decades of, of influence, insight, and inspiration that will help you because it's not just simply motivation, it's actually experience. Mm -hmm. So I challenge you to stay on the lookout for one of the projects that is coming out uh, pretty soon. It, it's it's going to be a blessing. Uh, service to humanity is civility in action, folks. Service to humanity mm. is civility in action. Love it. Love it. That's Amen. what I would say to everyone listening today. Uh, it's been a blessing. And that is a closing word. Yes. That's my closing word. Service to humanity yes. is civility in action. Amazing, thank you so much. And um, Dr. Rivers. You're the greatest in the world, let's do it. Let's do it, and there's greatness within each and every one of us. 7.8 billion people, 7.8 billion greatnesses. <laughs> and 7.8 billion solutions to the world problems. Dr. Basinga, if I could. Um, yeah. I know we're getting ready to close. I'd just like to share with everyone that Civility 360 is launching in about 13 minutes. You can go to www.civility360.com. That is a show similar to um, a, greatness, uh, a great live show. Uh, and it's myself and the world uh, greatest civility leader, Dr. Clyde Rivers where we'll be bringing 360 degree angle of civility all around the world. So in about 13 minutes, you'll see that pop up online. If you haven't checked it out, go to our Facebook, Civility360, and join that platform. We will become the hub for civility around the globe. Oh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for watching. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, it's been a great pleasure having you. It's been a great pleasure you being with us and watching these great men share their life experiences, share their greatness. My name is Dr. Patrick Singh. It's been a great, a great pleasure being with you tonight.